Roger Twab along with Bob Cousy at the Boston Guard tonight for game two of this Eastern Conference Championship Series between the Celtics and the 76ers. Of course, last night a very exciting finish. The 76ers picked up a 105-104 win against the Celtics as Andrew Toney sank a couple of ice-cold free throws with two seconds left. The Celtics not able to get off a very good shot at the buzzer by Larry Bird. Consequently, the Sixers go up one game, nothing, Bob, in a very, very big game. Now the Celtics, the home court advantage is neutralized, and uh, hey, they got they got a tough road to hoe now. Well, it figured to be neutralized anyway. They were not going to be Philadelphia back-to-back -back games. The Bill Fitch in right out back point was well taken. Ironically enough, now it works in our favor. The fact that the second game is being played so close to the first is now, I think, going to give the Celtics an advantage. Obviously, the first of the must games uh, in this series, as far as the Celtics are concerned, they cannot afford to go two down. They will not go two down, in my opinion. They're going to win tonight. I think they're prepared. They've got to do something about Tony, but I'm sure Bill Fitch dealt with that during the day. Uh, He's the only one that really broke loose. They did a respectable job on Jay. They should have won the game last night. They just simply did not shoot well from the foul line, and in my mind, that's the story of the game. That's why they lost. Well, they missed 12 free throws last night, and uh, I'll never forget that play when Larry Bird went up, and it was a goaltending on Caldwell Jones, and we looked at the replay, and you said, I hope it's not a one-point game. The officiating, there were some questionable calls, but nonetheless, the Celtics did miss 12 free throws, and it was a one-point game. And as you said, they did play some good basketball, a good comeback at the end, and I think as Bill Fitch mentioned in our pregame show, he's got to get some more work out of Maxwell other than three minutes at the end of the game. Well, believe it or not, Larry Bird uh, came out firing away last night in the first half. He had a very effective first half off offensively, but I think the combination of their running that break well and his shooting from outside kind of neutralized their inside game. They didn't go into Max and Parrish, or they weren't aware of them early enough. Here are the uh, sixes being introduced. D. Big D was he a didn't hurt him last, last night, night. No. but he didn't hurt him. He had 10 points, uh, and he had about eight boards. Uh, he wasn't an awesome factor, but I agree. He, uh, There's he an awesome an factor. Dr. J well, had a quiet 25. They kept him under control. Max and, and Mikhail especially, you know, made Jay work for those 25. Caldwell Jones uh, had a typical game for him. Tony is the guy they're going to have to find early. They're going to have to force him in the middle. They're going to have to hit him to, with the double team quickly. Now, they should have expected that kind of, of performance from Tony because he got 35 against him in the last game of the season. This kid, if, you know, there's Tiny being introduced. If Tony doesn't get your immediate concentration, he has the ability to break loose like he did last night. Celtics being introduced right now. Tiny Archibald, Chris Ford, Robert Perry, Cedric Maxwell, and Larry Bird. This afternoon, Bob, the Celtics had an hour and a half practice at 10.30 this morning. The Sixers had a half-hour meeting about 1 o'clock. We talked about the Celtics in the 9-10 day layoff and not having an effect. But I, I, in retrospect now, as they came out to a quick start, they got a little sluggish to the middle part of the game. We would not expect that to happen tonight. Got that one game under their belt. I wouldn't think so. Both teams didn't play up to their potential last night. I didn't see any effect of the layoff with the exception of the poor foul shooting. I think uh, the fact that they only shot 60% from the line perhaps uh, reflected that 10-day layoff. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem sung by Brighton's own Freddie Tag Tenalia.
take a look at the officials this evening. And once again, a trio on hand with a backup. The lead officials tonight will be the veteran Daryl Gerritsen, number 10, and then Lee Evans is number 8. And Jim Capers will once again be the backup official for the second night in a row. Lee Jones and Daryl Gerritsen, the officials tonight. Jim Capers, the backup official. Another sellout crowd at the Boston Garden, as it has been throughout this basketball season. Bob, we talk about regular season records, and both the Celtics and the Sixers finished at 62 and 20, but the last time a team with the best regular season record won an NBA championship, you got to go back to 72-73 when the Lakers won 69 games. Well, it doesn't always go according to form. Uh, we're well aware of that. I think we mentioned last night, however, there's never, there has, in my uh, memory, there hasn't been as as an unorthodox uh, set of series played where there have been so many upsets. But generally, the two or three top teams, you know, one of those three uh, are going to bring home the championship. In that Western Division, we've got a couple of clubs that are going to be, uh, you know, playing to get into the finals who are under 500 during the season. So. Well, in the Western Conference Championship Series, last night in Kansas City, the Houston Rockets with a, a rather easy and impressive win over the Kansas City Kings. The Kings went with uh, Phil Ford. I was really surprised. Play. Yes, I that. was too. Because Psychologically, that, that was, in my opinion, an extremely uh, <laughs> tenuous move there. Yeah. They had done so well oh, without yeah. him, and uh, well, he is a gutsy kid. He's a competitor, but uh, then again, they had done so well without him, and it seemed like he was just a bit out of control, trying a little bit too hard, and I'd be interested to see uh, if Cotton Fitzsimmons goes back to his well, original starting Grun lineup. Grunfeld and Wedman did such an outstanding job for them in the backcourt. It must have really been a downer to have Ford come in and start last night. Tip controlled by Philadelphia. Archibald on Cheeks, Ford on Hollins, Parrish on Dawkins, Bird on Caldwell, Jones, and Maxwell with his hands full with Dr. J. Going in deep to Dawkins. Jay on top, back to Darrell, who likes that 16-footer. It won't go and Bird the rebound. As we said last night, generally they're going to give Dawkins that outside shot. He likes to take it, uh, especially when he's not got it, and he'll hit it occasionally, but it's better than giving him the, uh, the muscle stuff inside. Foul inside on Dr. J as he is guarding Cedric Maxwell. Celtics immediately trying to post Maxwell low. Jay got off to a slow start last night, Bob. And Billy Cunningham pulled him out of the game, and Bill Fitch told us in our pregame thought might have been one of the key moves in the game by Cunningham, getting him out of there early and setting him down for a little while. Well, uh, you know, Jay doesn't force. Jay's going to give you his average or better in most every big game, certainly. Uh, so I don't think it was anything to be concerned about. Blocked by Irving. Parrish with three on the shot clock. Won't go. And Dawkins comes away with it. Celts have got to go inside, I think, more often and early tonight to establish that kind of a game. Out of bounds, pass intended for Caldwell Jones. Jay having a word with Daryl Gerritsen about Bird pushing off. It'll be Celtics basketball nonetheless. Last night, Caldwell Jones and Larry Bird, Bob, really physical in the early going establishing position. And maybe that's why Larry came out a little bit for that shot last night, that Caldwell was a little too much for him inside. Of course, that's the advantage Larry has. That time they get Maxwell it in. This is Parrish to follow. The shot won't go. And the foul is going to be on Daryl Dawkins. Celtics very aggressive, as expected, in the early going here. Here's the Maxwell move. They finally get it in. Jay went for the steal and didn't get it. Max spun around him, and there you see Parrish with a good effort off the board. Can't quite disengage himself, however, to... Uh, put his shot up. Perry shooting 58% from the floor in the playoffs. Robert averaging 17 points, 9.4 rebounds per game in playoff action. Parrish has now hit 8 of 14 from the charity stripe. Celtics get on the board first, one nothing. Jones on top, misses it. Maxwell with a rebound. Now Max got a couple of quick boards last night and went into kind of a, a daze. His tiny hit from outside. I'll tell you, Max was sure aggressive the final three minutes of the game. They can get an effort like that tonight. Oh, wow. Jay Tiny, just and Jay. Like Tiny out. Tiny went to the floor rather heavily, although we see him do that occasionally. Hollins misses. Caldwell Jones gets it back. Yeah, Tiny went for the leg scissor as Jay, after Jay knocked him down. Celts have to box out a little bit better tonight, especially Jones and Jay. They both came up with about uh, nine offensive boards between them. 
whistle underneath. Three out second violation. Second. That'll be Boston basketball. Parrish uh, giving Dawkins some pretty good pressure underneath, and Philadelphia was not able to uh, get the ball into him. He camped in there a little bit too long. Maxwell will take the outside shot. Won't go. Parrish crashing, but Caldwell Jones comes away with it. Third rebound for CJ. Cheeks pushed off by Tiny Archibald outside. Cheeks and Tiny had a pretty good battle going last night, Bob. Yes, they did. Uh, neither one of them had much success stopping the other from penetrating, frankly. And this is what they both must concentrate on, because these are the kids, as we said, that set the tempo, especially on a the break. They've got to find each other early. Bird, Bird with tips a it good out. Tip yes, rebound. it was as Jay was coming in on the follow. Intelligent play by Larry Bird there. Almost uh, got the break started a little bit. Larry back. Bird from on top, his first super tonight. Bird averaging 25.4 points per game in playoff action, pulling down over 12 rebounds a contest. And the Celts on top, 5 nothing. Really Almost measured that loose. one, too. Cheeks from outside, won't go. Philly not hitting anything. Bird almost loses it to Maxwell in the lane. And in. Oh, whoa. And he's fouled. The pass from Larry Bird. And we'd like to see it again. Fine movement from that weak side. Watch Maxwell come through the middle here. Bird lets one cutter go through. That opens up the middle for Maxwell, who follows Archibald. And beautiful execution. Timeout on the floor, 8.55 to go. First quarter, Celts lead at 7-0. We'll be back right after this. Well, Bob Cousy back with you. Before we went to that commercial break, Caldwell Jones committed the foul. Maxwell will go to the line to try to complete the three-point play. Maxwell, 84% from the charity stripe in playoff competition. And that time, Bird with a fine pass inside traffic, Bob. Well, he let the area clear, which, you know, that sounds like it's easy to do, but it's not. In other words, he let the first cutter go through, who took the defense with him, opened up the middle, and Max alertly followed the cutter through there, and that's what uh, really set the play up. Bird just let it develop. 8 nothing. Celtics on top. Three team fouls on Philadelphia now. Cheeks looking in. They're still trying to go inside to Dawkins. Parrish is still doing a good job on the overplay. Holland's wide open, and he rarely misses that shot, as we mentioned. Lionel Holland's with the open shot. 8-2, first two points for Philadelphia tonight. Bird with the overplay on Jones, and uh, that opened up the Holland's move. Ford in the corner, and he runs right into Holland's. No call. Max gets it back to Chris. In and out. Dawkins the rebound. Here comes Cheeks. I think uh, Dal Gadsden's going to let the boys play. A lot of contact it's there. Cheeks, allowed, Cheeks. Uh, allowed to get too low before he was picked up. This is what I was saying a moment ago. Tiny has He's to hurt. find him early, and he has to find Tiny early. They can't let him penetrate easily or get Steal low. by Irving. Bad pass by Bird that time. Bounce pass to Cheeks. <laughs> Foul on Larry Bird. You and know, Mo Cheeks will go to the line. And that Dr. J interception, we'll take a look at it here. Well, now here's the uh, continuation of that play. Off to Jay Steele. Bird tried to get it into Max. With, with the kind of speed and quickness that guys like Dr. J, Cheeks, and Hollins have, you've got to try to start your offense as low as possible, especially if you're going inside with the pass, to make it as short a pass as possible, because this neutralizes their speed and quickness. The longer the pass, you know, the better shot they've got, as we've just seen Jay do it, stealing the ball. 8-5. Celtics scored the first eight. Sixers have scored the last five. Tiny scoops it in. No call. Parrish is there. Won't go on Irving. The rebound stripped loose by Maxwell. Dawkins on the floor. Tiny ties him up. Let it go, big guy. Tiny hit the floor again with... Uh, Pretty good impact there of last time through. Bob, give me a quick analysis on this jump ball, will you? <laughs> well, it's going to go left, and I think the guy in the red shirt is probably going to get the tip unless Tiny shows us something. He hasn't. Ten years. It did go left. That's where he had the two Philadelphia guys together. Cheeks with it now. 7.25 to go first quarter. 8.5, Celts on top. Cheeks isolated in the corner. Going low to Dawkins on the baseline. They all stick that thing out there like a little pee. 
He'll take the turnaround and hits. Pretty good move. Pretty good move. He wanted to go in. Parrish had the defensive position established, so he went out for the fallaway jumper. Max works inside and hits. Maxwell takes it right in on Jay. Again, a lot of contact there. The officials are going to let him play, so we can look for another physical game tonight. Dawkins, once again, he'll take the turnaround. Short that time, and Maxwell comes away with it. Maxwell with three rebounds now will bring it down himself, takes the lane, off to Parrish, who get it back on top to T, who drives the middle, blocked by Irving, could have been goaltending, wasn't. Second block by Jay. Tiny's got it again, and now they blow the whistle. Garrison with the call underneath. Foul is going to be on Mo Cheeks. Uh, Tiny's upset. He wanted the goaltending. I think we can take a peek at it. There's Bird faking the outside shot. Going to find Tiny in the corner here eventually. Well, that was the foul. That wasn't the... Uh, Bird foul. with the shot and hits. Larry Bird was a couple of hoops now. Seven. Irving, bad miss that time. Ball loose on the floor. Larry has got it. He's a got man down. Deep. Irving deflects it. Good job by Jay to save the it's ball a, that time. It's a shame Max couldn't whistle that time because uh, it took Larry a second to uh, look down floor and spot that he had a man open. That was enough for Jay to get back in position with his great speed. Pretty good spiral, though, by Birdie. <laughs> Ooh, the long, hard one. Right? Forward from the corner, two-pointer won't connect, and Caldwell Jones with the rebound. Caldwell pulling down almost 10 rebounds per game in these playoffs. Hollins inside with the basket. It counts in the foul on Robert Parrish. That's good. good move there by Hollins. Uh, he used Parrish really to run... Uh, Run Chris Ford off. Watch. Chris is in pretty good position here. He's, he uh, he used Parrish to rub Ford off, and then the big guy uh, wasn't able to get to the shot. Holland, 76% free throw shooter. And he has five points. 5.51 to go first quarter. Irving has yet to score. 12-10, Celts up by two. They got off to an 8-0 lead. Whistle out top, and foul's going to be on Cheeks, Bob, but he's complaining the Parrish moved the pick into him. Well, once you set the pick, obviously you've got to hold it. You can't put out a tail or a hip or an elbow or anything else. The Celtics like to run this play, and they like to set it up low. Well, he kind of leaned a little. Cheeks has been going over the top, and that's the way you've got to play that. You can't let Tiny get behind that pick and give him a head start one way or the other. So Cheeks is playing it correctly. Andrew Tony has checked into the game for Mo Cheeks. Celtics in the penalty situation. Archibald at the line shooting 78% in these playoffs. So Andrew Tony, who was the main man last night for the Philadelphia 76ers off the bench, is into the game for Mo Cheeks as Tiny hits them both. 14-10. Tony, the rookie. Well, he's got to be found early, and that's what Chris Ford is doing. I would think that Chris is going to try to force him to the middle. And Garrettson with the call. Foul going to be on Ford, his first. That will be the fourth team foul. For obvious reasons, I think he needs help on this kid. He's explosive, and he's got that quick first step. I think you'd want to overplay him a half a man to the outside, try to force a middle, hit him with a quick double team, and try to force a bad pass. He is a careless passer. Tiny on Lionel Hollins now. Back to Andrew Tony. He's not afraid to put it up from the three-point line. Cunningham looking for the foul. Tony's doing it by himself. Scoops it off the Dawkins lookout. Well, that was wow. a uh, chocolate thunder super deluxe. That's the first one we've seen from Daryl in this series. I'll tell you, he fought the double team and got by two men, finally got it in there where the uh, area was open. Well, this is the thing he was doing last night, Bob. He yeah. was making the penetration, addition it off with a good shot, which uh, impressed me considerably. Bird with three on the shot clock, blocked by Caldwell Jones, and Larry's knocked into the camera crew. And they're going to call the foul on CJ. Pretty good spill there by Bird after the rejection. Take a look. He takes it in the middle well, uses his body, and leans in to uh, Caldwell. But the uh, 
the contact and the foul caused Barrett to take a pretty good fill. Bobby Jones checks in for the first time. Jones and Tony were the two guys who did the damage off the bench. The Philadelphia bench last night outscored the Boston bench 44 to 16. And obviously that can't, uh, no, it can't. or should not happen tonight. Bird shooting 96% in the playoffs from the penalty stripe, and he drops them both. Larry with six points. And it's 16-12. Celts on top by four with 4.55 to go. Ford picking up early. Dawkins Got sets it. the pick. Watch that. Daryl did that to Chris several times last year, I remember, in the playoffs. And there's a little shove in with the shoulder. No call. He misses it. Jay and Max going at it, and Max gets it. Selby's got an opportunity to break here. Max brings it down to Bird. The Beautiful. Pass it in. Patented Larry Bird. Beautiful delay and anticipation by Bird on that pass. Here it is. Max takes it out of the pack, finds Bird. Bird gave it a one count and let Max get back in. Beautiful pass. In the meantime, an offensive foul on Andrew Tony. And that brings the crowd to life. 18-12, Celts on top by six. Well, I know my prediction on that kid didn't look good last night, but let me tell you, I think he's going to blow a couple uh, and help the Celts before we're through here in this series. I think the series are going to go seven. I still say Boston's going to win it in seven, and I think Andrew Tony's going to give us a couple of games. Foul inside on Dawkins here, Dawkins Bob. is going to reach out. Tiny brings it into him, shows it, and Dawkins took the bait. Three for two, Archibald at the line. Uh, Tony, I think Cunningham is locked in now after that game he played yesterday, which was an exceptional one. I think Billy Cunningham is going to have to use him, and I think eventually in this series, that's going to become a plus for the Celtics. Caldwell Jones checks in. Dawkins comes out. Eight fouls, Bob, already on Philadelphia in this first quarter with 4.14 to go. I would have thought it might have been the other way around. Uh, I figured the Celtics were expected and did come out with great intensity and have dug in pretty... Uh, pretty well on the D, but they've done it without fouling. 2012, Celtics have got that eight-point lead back. They got off to an eight-nothing start in this ball game. Less than four to go. Seven on the shot clock as Jay gets it to Hollins. Inside to Jay. Partial block oh, yeah. by Parrish. Little intimidation by Parrish. Forces an air ball off Jay. Tiny, he's got the middle. He'll pull up at the foul line. Won't fall. Maxwell underneath, blocked by Irving, and here comes Andrew Tony. Some kind of defensive play. Tony by to Julius. Hollins underneath, back to Jay. Whoa, jam it, Jay. Woo. Well, I'll tell you, first hoop for Dr. J. Yeah. But it was a loud one, and he deserved it because he made an outstanding defensive play on the other end off the Maxwell offensive board. It looked like a layup until Jay got up there and just swatted it away and then finished it with that thunderous dunk on the other Seven end. on the shot clock as Bird hits. Larry now with eight first quarter points. And last night, Bob, he had ten first quarter points. But he was forcing the offense. I think it really disrupted his outside shooting, disrupted the con continuity of the uh, half-court offense for the Celtics. I think eventually it hurt them a bit. Foul is on Chris Ford, and the 76ers now in the penalty. Steve Mix checks into the game, and out comes Julius Irving. And let's take a look at that last foul, Ford on Tony. Oh, there's again, Chris looks like he's forcing a middle. There's Parrish waiting to help out. If you hit him with a quick double team, but it has to be immediate and it has to be intense, he is reluctant to find the free man. You'll see him fight the double team constantly, and he's not, he's a careless passer under pressure, but you've got to put that kind of pressure on him. That's what they did not do last night. Tony drops them both, 2.56 to go. 22-16. Hollins picks up Archibald. B.J. on Larry. Caldwell Jones on Parrish. Bird has got the wide open 20-footer and hits. Larry Bird with 10 first quarter points has hit all four yeah. of his field goals, and Bob. You see, that, that's what I mean by, you know, as opposed to forcing it a little from the outside last night and taking it off the flow, which he normally does. Tonight, like that shot was there. He took it. The last outside shot was open, uh, and he took it. He didn't have Partially to look for the shot. Maxwell. Got a man Bird, on front. got Max deep. Incomplete. And Maxwell runs up the tunnel to the locker room. <laughs> Go on back, Max. It's not halftime. God bless it. Uh, he's just going for a Coke. Top floor, 220 to go first quarter. Celts lead at 24-16, and we'll be back right after this. 
Your Twibo with Bob Cousy with you at the Boston Garden as the Celtic front court has outscored the Sixer front court 18 to 6 so far, Bob. And the Celts with an eight point lead. Let's take a look at Daryl Dawkins, and he's got a name for all of these. Well, whatever he names them, none of them are timid, I'll tell you. And that's a, uh, <laughs> that's that's not a like good example of flowering blossom. Uh, or what is it, Paul West had. Uh, I'll tell you, he has restrained himself a bit, though. It cost him a little money last year when he shot at uh, that backboard. And not a raindrop so trickling down a bamboo shoe. No, 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 no. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> Nothing Dowell uh, does. Basketball. Uh, Tony lifted his foot up there. No foul. Bird knocks it out. It'll be Philadelphia basketball. Both teams continue to do a good job running the inside men. Uh, they've gotten occasional baskets in low, but Tony with a miss. Man out front again. Got Parrish and Ford, but Tiny will take it up, set things up offensively with 1.58 to go. First quarter. Bird has got the lane, has to find somebody. He gets it off the glass to Parrish. Looked like a pinball machine that time. Somebody grabbed it. It happened so quickly that it caught most of the players by surprise, except Big Rabbit was there with the quick hands. BJ with the left hand. Nice move that time, the pass from Tony. Geez, he changed hands quickly with the ball, didn't he? Jones is tough. He does everything well on the basketball floor. 26-18, 120 to go in the quarter. Tiny to Parrish, sandwiched there by Hollins. T takes the lane off the glass, won't go. Caldwell Jones with his fifth rebound. Hollins from Tony, won't go. Missed the gimme that time. Six rebounds for Bird. A prayer almost went by Archibald, the foul on Andrew Tony. That's good thinking by Tiny. He he felt the contact, but he heard the whistle. He wasn't ready to shoot, but watch him squeeze this one out in a hurry. He's going to fake right, go left. He prefers to go left. He gets the contact, shuffles it off, which will hopefully produce uh, three for two. Rick Roby checks in, and Robert Parrish will come out, and Clint Richardson comes into the game for the 76ers. And Hollins will check out. Archibald drops the first one in. Celtics are 8 of 9 from the free throw line. Make it 9 of 10 now. Well, if they've been able to transfer that to last night's shooting stats on the line, why I think they'd have uh, had themselves a 1-0 lead instead of being down one. Well, they shot well in the first half from the free throw line. The second half is what did them in. 28-18, 10-point lead, biggest lead. Lob pass inside, off the glass. Well, that's offense by accident, as you like to say it, Bob. Well, not only that, but Bobby John saved uh, a bad pass early because it was uh, well above its target, but he went and chased it down. Oh, what a pick by Roby. Tiny hits. Roby likes setting picks, doesn't he? That's the shot Tiny's got to hit to really make him effective. Uh, we're all well aware of his penetrating ability, but if he stands out there 17, 18 feet and pops a few of those in, he becomes impossible to stop. Tony driving the lane, whistle outside. It's going to be on Chris Ford. That's going to be three on Chris. Well, yes, you've got to feel for Chris a little bit. You know, he's working hard on him. He's moving his feet. The kid has outstanding ability, good change of uh, pace. He's explosive when he takes that first step, finally takes it to the basket. So you really, when they isolate him the way they did on top, there isn't a great deal that you can do he hit, other than foul him. He hit 9 of 10 free throws last night, Bob. Yeah, and obviously the two big ones at the end there, which... Uh, and he's hit 4 tonight. Full well, court pressure, 19 seconds to go. A lot of plays for Ruby. Bird to Maxwell. 14 on the clock in the first quarter. Oh, Maxwell Max. throws it away. Third turnover for the Celtics. Boy, they, Philadelphia uh, will have it with 10 seconds to go. They handle a 2-1-2 full court zone pressure that uh, Philly had laid on him easily and got it down floor, found the open man, but Max let the uh, sky ball go. Roby the rebound, knocked loose in the buzzer to end the first quarter of play. With the score, the Celtics 30 and the 76ers 22. We'll be back to the Boston Garden right after this. First quarter, Celts lead at 30-22. Celtics shot 48% from the floor. Philadelphia but 35. 
Seltz 91% at the charity stripe. Philadelphia 86%. 17-9 the rebound difference, Bob, in favor of the Celtics. Well, five on the offensive board, and Maxwell with seven rebounds in that first quarter. Clint Richardson in now for the uh, 76ers. Yeah. ML Carr checks Next. in for the Celtics. I think this is the quarter that's going to be most indicative because uh, Philadelphia, I'm sure, realized that Boston had 24 hours to get good and upset over that loss last night. Billy Cunningham told them, hey, they're going to come out with fire in their eyes. Just withstand the initial onslaught. Hang in there. Don't fall too far behind. And we'll go to work the last three quarters. So if the Celts can duplicate the performance here in the second quarter, I think they'll have gone a long way towards taking this one home. Carr in there now. Gets it low to Maxwell. Mix on him. Max having a hard time handling it. Two on the shot clock. Three-point land. Won't go. And Clint Richards in the rebound. Roby and Dawkins going at it. And Garrison says, cool it, guys. Richardson also a pretty good penetrator, so Tiny uh, got to be careful. ML Carr on Andrew Tony with Archibald on Richardson. Bird on Bobby Jones. He'll take the shot and hits it. BJ with six points. Jones so seldom shoots, really, that he catches you by surprise every time he puts it up there. And his shot selection, as we pointed out, is excellent. Whistle Mix underneath. And, Bounce uh, going to be on Steve Mix. A lot of potential trouble spots out here at the moment in terms of individual matchups. We might keep an eye on Mix, who's a very physical player, and Max trying to keep him from getting the inside position. Roby Dawkins, and I'll tell you, watch ML and Tony go at it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they have been known to mix it up just a bit. Bird with a running right-hander, and in! Whoa. Larry Bird! Too bad a move, yeah. yeah. It's fairly nice. Not too difficult a shot, huh, Bob? <laughs> going to your left and throwing it back with your right. Tony inside it hits. Not a not a bad effort right there by Andrew Tony. That was a good move. Kind of leaned in and ML Carr should give uh, Tony all he can handle, but he got the Carr's taking it in the lane, night. puts it up. Tony the rebound. Billy now with a three on two. Tony to Richardson, broken up by Maxwell. They hit the deck. Loose ball still rolling around, and ML gets it. Long pass to Larry, to Tiny. And in! High off the glass by Tiny Archibald. Good timing again on that pass by Larry Bird to Tiny. He knew Jones was in hot pursuit, and as you saw, Tiny just barely got it away before Bobby Jones got in there. Four assists for Larry Bird so far, and both Tiny and LB with 12 points apiece. And all pretty spectacular passes, too. Six on the shot clock. Now it's down to three. Tony, two-pointer, won't go. Bobby Jones a rebound. Tony's, Tony's a rookie like Kevin McHale, not afraid to put it up. And they both want yeah. the basketball. But again, you know, this is what can hurt Mix you. Mix inside five. and hits. Good job there. Good pass by Dawkins. Let him away from the pressure and into the basket. Mix used his body effectively against Maxwell. Bird to Maxwell underneath. Won't go Mix a rebound. Nice pass by Larry Bird. Max rested just a bit. 34-28, Richardson baseline to Bobby Jones, wide open from 12, in and out. Mix a good little push off that time. Richardson underneath, blocked by Bird. Mix, no call, Maxwell gets it. Long pass to Bird. Foul's going to be on Andrew Tony. Tell you, it's getting physical under the boards. Roby has a technical foul being called on Mix, I guess. Uh, McHale coming into the game, which is a good substitution as the end of the bird play. i tell you, he could have got hurt on that. Yes. He, he went up high for the pass and kind of got blindsided. Didn't have a chance to get, get his balance. Tiny will be shooting the technical. I believe it was on mix. Awfully, that foul was on Tony. Awfully physical. Uh, Three fouls on Andrew Tony now. team fouls on Philadelphia. Roby's going to have to start throwing his weight around on that defensive board a bit because Mix and Dawkins are going to give you all the muscle you can handle. Good pick there. Tiny misses the shot. Tipped outside. Bobby Jones comes up with it. The Richardson deflected by McHale. Tony puts it up and it drops in. Quick on the trigger. Yep. He's one of the leading scorers in the nation last year. 35-30, Celts on top. We said the object uh, of the drill last night was to not let any 
76 will really go wild, keeping it at average. They did this with Jay. Tony averaged about 15 during the year, and he got 26. So. Here comes Tony, and in, Andrew Tony. Good job there. Took he has six second-quarter points, and it's 35-32. The Celtics want a timeout. Timeout with 8-12 to go. First half, Celts lead at 35-32. We'll be back to the Boston Garden right after this. 35-32, a three-point Celtic lead. They've led by as many as 10 in this game. And Maurice Cheeks checks back in, and Tony comes out with three fouls. And just in the nick of time, the, uh, the, the youngster was warming it up. Defense on the part of both teams. Uh, Half-court trap by Philadelphia, and Kevin is uh, a little bit tentative, McHale, on finding that free man. Zone defense call. Calling the zone, they were in it right along. Mixed, they were trapping uh, at half zone, court, yeah. and the three men in back were playing zone, as, as we all know by now. You cannot guard an area of the floor. You can put five people defensively on one man with the ball, but they must be guarding someone. If you're guarding an area of the floor, which is evidently what the call was on Barkin, uh, it's a violation, and a, and a warning is no longer needed. They used to be they'd have to warn the. Uh, the team and call it the second time around. Mikhail low, the turnaround. He had some contact with oh, wow. the ball. Nice play. Kevin, Kevin's very, uh, he's very vocal and he's uh, very demonstrated when he feels that he's been wronged. Whistle underneath, call. Foul's going to be on Mikhail. I saw Kevin coming in the arena tonight. He says, did it look like I was fouling on those replays last night? I said, Kevin, you never foul. It's, not, it's that, just a figment of the official's imagination. That kid's really got it together, doesn't he? So, uh, Jones oh, inside, boy, great nice move. Play. Good movement again without the ball. So important for an effective offensive man. Not so much what you do with the ball, but what you do without it. And Jones is perpetual motion out there. That's why he's so difficult to guard. 38-34, Bird from way outside and hits. Larry Bird with 14 points, and it's 40-34. He has hit six of seven tonight from the floor. <laughs> Offensive foul, called by Lee Jones. It's going to be on Daryl Dawkins, and that is three on Dawkins, Bob. Well, that'll help the cause a little bit, because uh, Dawkins sets a, uh, a mighty pick out there. That time he, he set it and moved two men out of the play. They call the foul. But, as I said last night, I think this kid Caldwell Jones uh, gives them a little more effective lineup when Bobby Jones and uh, Dr. J are in there with Hollins and Cheeks. I think that's their strongest team. So well, Dawkins comes out and a technical on Billy Cunningham as he was jarring with Daryl Gerritsen that whole time, disputing the call on the foul with Daryl Dawkins. And Daryl says, I'm going to give you one more chance, Billy. And Billy got it, and that is three technicals so far tonight on the 76ers, and Tiny will go to the line. He has been absolutely perfect so far. Archibald, eight of eight from the charity strike. Make it nine and nine. And Tiny tonight with 15 points. So it is now Cheeks, Richardson, Irving, Caldwell, Jones, and Mix. Parrish is in for Roby. Archibald, Carr, Bird, and McHale. 41-34. Sure, sure the boys are giving it a little more concentration in that line tonight after the 60% last night, which, as we said, literally cost them the game. Bird, the baseline. Off the glass. What a shot right there by Larry Bird. Oh, is that tough? Is that a tough point? Very difficult move there. A little off balance, just held it over his head and gave it the wrist job. Cheeks to Richardson. Great penetration that time That's by nice Cheeks play. in the baseline. That's nice play. 43-36, six and a half to go. First half. Parrish on top. They'd like to isolate McHale down low against Mix. Tiny moving off the pick. Off the rim, Cheeks has it. Mo will push it up, but Stop he'll wait. Ball. Yeah. You've got to stop that ball as quickly as you can. Delay the penetration. Let the defense get back. Mix underneath. Nice play there. The pass from Dr. J. Mix with yeah. four points. Every time they open up a little daylight, they relax on defense, and Philadelphia roars back. They've got that kind of ability and explosive uh, offensive uh, play. McHale! Ooh. His 
second hoop. That's what they'd like to get, as you said a moment ago. McHale low on Nix probably will turn over a foul or a pretty good shot for Kevin. Philadelphia 76ers would like a timeout with 5.47 to go first half. Self's lead at 45-38. We'll be back to the Boston Garden right after this. In his first half, 45-38, a seven-point Celtic lead, and Gerald Henderson will check into the game now for the Celtics. And Earl Curitan has checked into the game for Philadelphia. And uh, we heard from the Philadelphia folks that Billy Cunningham would go deep on his bench tonight. And we'll probably see some people that haven't played too much during the playoffs. Curitan hasn't seen a great deal of playing time this year, backing up uh, Dow. He's a uh, junior el eligible third round choice. Pretty good leap and rebound out of the University this. of Detroit. Isolate Jay on McHale. Puts it in and it counts. I'll tell you, psychologically, that's a big hope for Jay to get. Uh, and I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if he asked for that opportunity because as we pointed out, McHale did a pretty good job defensively on uh, Jay last uh, night. Only the second hoop for Jay. And I think Jay wanted to take it to him early and see what he could accomplish. 75% free throw shooter in the playoff. And Bob, the uh, Celtic starters have scored 41 points. Philadelphia starters, but 16 so far in this game. Jay with five points now. Tiny Archibald getting a rest. Carr taking it inside. Off the glass and in by ML Carr. Pretty good move there because Cheeks had the good position. Still was able to knock it down. Jay scoops it to Curtin. Steal by Carr. He's got Henderson. Two on one to Gerald. Won't go. McHale to follow it in. Beautiful. Gerald got a little careless with that layup. But McHale saved him. Nice job. Good pursuit. Not many big men are going to bust 94 feet when the guard has got to step on the field and they figure it's a waste of choice. Jay, the fall away. Won't go. Bird tips it outside. Loose ball foul. It's going to be on Caldwell Jones. And on CJ, that is three. So now you've got Dawkins with three, Caldwell Jones with three, and Andrew Coney with three fouls with 4.42 to go in the first and half. three technicals called. <laughs> so here it is. Cobb brings it down, just flicks it over. Watch Gerald. Actually, the defensive man got in there and got a hand on it, too. He got it up high, which is normally where you want it, but you also want to protect it a bit. Bob, now they bring in Bobby Jones, and they take out Caldwell, so they put Curden in the middle at center. He played a little center in the series against Milwaukee and didn't do too bad a job. Parrish slams it home, and for Robert Parrish, only his second hoop of the night, just five points. Well, little luck involved there. Uh, the ball finally got through the massive arms, and Robert Parrish was able to come up with it. Blocked from behind, but they're going to call the foul on ML Carr. Foul will be on ML. Aggressive play by ML there from behind. And here's Cheeks bringing it down. Again, nice change of direction, but Henderson, with a good defensive uh, position, could have drawn a foul there. ML comes over the top. On the season, Curden just a 51% free throw shooter. Yeah, he's basically there you see uh, why. a shot block on a rebounder. That's uh, about the way I put him up, Coach. <laughs> Old stone fingers, huh? Well, that's a little better. He got it in the air, but the result is the same. He got it over the rim that second time around. Eight rebounds for Bird. 51-41, 10-point lead, biggest lead of the night. Hey, Larry wow. Bird. Did he lay a fake on Jay that time? 18 points for the Birdman. He is 8 of 9 from the field. Bird is doing it. Biggest lead of the night. He did it pretty well last night, too. Yes, he did. 10 on the shot clock. Chiefs isolating on Henderson. Releases the car. Celtics have a middle. five on two. ML and in. What a move. What a move by ML Carr. Celtics have run off 10 straight points, and they take a 55-41 lead. And they want a 20-second timeout. And here we go with ML Carr. take a peek. He's going to fake it in the middle. You saw him look cheeks off, decide to take it in strong himself. Great move to the basket. Philadelphia has taken a 20-second timeout, and the Celtics have their biggest lead of the night, 55-41, 14 points on top with 3.26 to go, and they have run off 10 straight here, Bob. 
I'll tell you what, without Caldwell or without Darrell in there, Six is hurting just a little bit with Curran in the middle. Hollins was looking for the pass back to the middle. This is classic. You always want the ball in the middle on a fast break. In this case, it helped open up the lane for ML because by looking at Bird, Hollins cheated a little bit towards Bird, anticipating the pass, and then ML just turned it on, and uh, the lane was open at that point. Good job. Lionel Hollins back in there for Philadelphia. Henderson and Cheeks matching up. Selleck defense has picked up. Good overplay. They want to give Gooden as much pressure as possible. To try Jay, to the mayor's turnover. Man out front. Carr doesn't see him. He'll hold it up. Just over three minutes to go. First half. Jay is two of seven from the floor tonight. Henderson had Bird underneath but didn't see him. Now he goes to Parrish. Should be able to work on Kyrton. Eight on the shot clock. They want to go low. ML will take it from 20. In and out. Parrish right there and in. That is a I'll monumental you, mismatch right now. Absolutely. I'm surprised that Cunningham is gambling this long, despite the foul situation, because this game, if the Celtics concentrate on Parrish in the next two minutes, can get it completely away from them in that period of time. Car the rebound off the Puritan miss. Celtics lead it by 16. Bird wants it. Oh, wow. What the Parrish there. Lee Jones, the outside of the goaltending. That's right at the basket to Larry Bird. Take a peek. Fine pass by Henderson. Really stretches Bird about as high as he can go. Bird knows that he doesn't have time to come down with the ball. Well, Curitan. Was it Curitan? Looked like it could have been McHale. In any event, it's a hope for Boston. We'll keep it right here. 59-41. Celtics have really run off a streak right now with 2.23 to go. We'll get the official scoring on it if it was credited to Bird, but Curitan with the interference. McHale was following it in, Bob. Yes, he was. On a replay, it appeared that McHale was up there with Curtin. Here it is. Yeah, it was Curtin with the right hand. Okay. Good break by the Celts. Again, the taking advantage of the foul situation that Philadelphia finds itself in. Three men with three. Caldwell Jones and Darrell Dawkins forcing Cunningham to get him out of there. And that complemented by the Selleck defense. They a couple of good, strong, fast break baskets, and uh, going into Parrish has opened us uh, a little daylight here. Well, they've run off 14 straight points, Bob. Credit the basket to Larry Bird. He now has 20 points on the night. What did he, he have last night? He has hit 9 of 10. 21, 21 at halftime last night, 35 on the night. Bird is 9 of 10 from the floor. He has eight rebounds and four assists. And he is putting on one of his patented displays of basketball prowess. Just doing it all. And Caldwell Jones will check back into the game now. And well, I, I, you know, uh, none too soon, I Maybe would say. a monumental mismatch was an yeah. understatement. Because those three minutes uh, might have put the game completely out of Philadelphia well, reach. They call him Earl the Twirl Cur Curitan. I guess it would have been Earl the Whirl for as many times as he was turned around in circles out there tonight. Henderson, Foul over on the side on Henderson. Uh, again, you can see the right-hand overplay. He's trying to force Tony middle. Tony's a little stubborn. He wants to continue. Block Good. by Perry. McHale keeps it alive and Bird has it. Finds Henderson the lead pass. Tip back and Bobby Jones comes up with it. Almost a great play by Henderson. We have got some exciting action right now. Two minutes to go in the first half. Tony in the lane, puts up the shot and hits. Well, he can get a shot I'll off, Bob. He yep. sticks that thing back behind his head. Long pass to Parrish and in. Beautiful. That's the first breakaway hoop they've gotten. Parrish, as we said has been doing this to opposing centers all season long. That's the first time Philadelphia's been making, making the transition extremely well. Tony the miss, Bird the rebound. 61-43. Bird with 10 boards on the night. Cross court to Carr. They want McHale posted up on mix. 10 on the shot clock. Bobby Jones going for the steal. 7 on the shot clock. Carr... Loses the ball, mixed to Hollins, and it'll be an easy two. ML's a little tired. He's a little careless with that ball there. 
Minuten fall up. 61-45. Bill Fitch calls out play number four for the Celtics. I think that was uh, improvisation time. Tony to Hollins, who holds up, takes the shot now, and hits. Lionel Hollins with the hoop, and he has nine points. 63-47, 27 seconds to go. Second quarter, Bird, the scooper, he oh, has wow. it now. On Steve Mix, the basket to Larry Bird. He has 22 points. Is Bird putting on a show tonight? Take a look. A long extension. Good fake gets Jones up in the air. Mix moves in to help. He gives it a scoop job with that long reach of his, enables him to maintain control of that ball on a, what amounts to an extremely difficult shot. Question is, did he want a sugar cone with that? <laughs> Big scoop, huh? Hits a free throw. First, first free throw of the quarter for Larry. He went to the line twice in the first period. He now has 23 points. And it's 66-47. Sixers will go for the final shot with 11 seconds on the clock. There's not much point in going for the final shot with 19 points down, I gotta tell you. Mix gets it with two on the clock, misses it. And that'll end the first half of play for the Boston Garden. And a good half it was for the Celtics, certainly, as the score would indicate. But a good tight half, not many balls thrown away, complete domination of the board, good intense defense. And that earned them a 19-point lead at halftime. The Celtics lead the 76ers 66-47, and we'll be back with our halftime right after this. I'm with Bob Cousy back with you at halftime. Bob, in that first half, uh, a couple of things that I, I did notice about the Philadelphia basketball team is in compared to last night's game, where they came out uh, rather sluggish at the beginning and then turned it on. I'm sure they felt that they had maybe enough momentum off that Milwaukee series and enough going for them that they could give it their best shot last night. A loss for them last night would have been demoralizing as hard as they played. Tonight... Down by 19 at the half here. It'll be interesting to see what happens at the beginning of this third quarter, how they come out. Uh, if they don't come out charged up, I got a feel that Billy Cunningham just going to go to the subs and give the guys a good rest. Now, the point is well taken. Two things to watch for. One is, you know, is Philly going to come out with the kind of intensity that you're re referring to that's going to be needed to try to, to cut into this 19-point lead quickly? The other thing to watch from the Stellick standpoint is the first two or three hoops could be very critical in terms of deciding, you know, that question. If the Celtics get the first couple and get it up to 21 or 22, you know, they might be able to coast in uh, here in the second half because I think it could be the, the crusher as far as Philadelphia is concerned. On the other hand, if Philly gets the first two or three hoops uh, uh, without retaliation, why, uh, that might give them the spark to, you know, to figure, hey, Maybe we can get back into this ball game. Obviously, they're an explosive team. You know, we have seen lead seesaw constantly during the year and in the playoffs. We saw Philadelphia blow a 17-point lead Sunday to Milwaukee in the yes, end of the did. third quarter. So very quickly, as a matter of fact, in a space of about six minutes. So, but that was you know, the seventh game of a series, and you know, I mean, the well. No, I, I hear what you're saying, and I agree. I, I think it's very possible that they're happy to come out of here with one win. This is what they, you know, what most teams figure when you've got two home games back-to-back, -back, come in and grab one, and that neutralizes the home court advantage. They've already accomplished that. So being 19 down, let's hope that they throw in the towel early, but uh, let's not uh, count on it. Foul situation is thus. Caldwell Jones, Daryl Dawkins, and Andrew Tony with three apiece. Chris Ford with three for the Celtics. Eight on the shot clock. Ford with a little double team on him. It's down to five, now to four. It's outside. Celtics won't get it off as they just throw up. And, oh, off the rim by Archibald. I'll tell you, that's a good, intelligent play by Tiny. Realized he had to release the ball before the clock expired, and they still would have had an opportunity there. He did hit the rim. The South could have come up with, uh, with a new team. If anybody's got to throw up a prayer, I'd like it to be Tiny, because a lot of them uh, fall for him. That's a little past his range. Though. The hook by Jones won't go. Tipped around, and the Celtics control it. Maxwell the rebound. He'll get it to Archibald. Cheeks right there in his face. 
T will take it back outside. Bird, 10 of 12 in that first half. Parrish, the baseline jumper, in and out. Mo Cheeks comes away. Stop the ball, Tiny. Stop the ball. Collins loses control, blocked by Parrish. Good job. He wants the trap, but he didn't get it. Parrish got it in the air. Over the back by Chris Ford, and it'll be Philadelphia basketball. Selleck's a little tentative in the opening going. We've just said how important the first hoop or two is. Go inside for it or get it on the break. But look for the good one. Try to break it open quickly here. Cheeks looking for the opening. Over the back, Robert Parrish, pass intended for Daryl Dawkins. And on Parrish, that will be his second foul. Robert Parrish became a very rich man about a month ago. Well, I'll tell you, whatever he got in today's terms, he deserved it as far as his performance this year is concerned. As we said, he was the most dominant big man in the game, and that includes some pretty good ones like Jabbar. Bird, Ronco, Dawkins a rebound. Well, we talked about the first couple of hoops. Neither team wants Blocked the by Tiny. Collins gets it inside to Caldwell, blocked by Parrish, and they're going to call goaltending. Credit the hoop to Caldwell, Joe. Well, that's a shame because uh, it didn't look like it was going to get steel. Let's take a look. You, know, you can't, uh, it's out of the picture, but it, it didn't appear that uh, it was going to touch anything. 66-49, 9.55, and a rather sluggish start to this third quarter. Seven on the shot clock. Bird with the turnaround shot. Hits! Bird with 25. 11 for 13 from the field. Celtic starters have outscored Philadelphia 56-21. You can't depend on your bench for all of your firepower, that's for sure. Tipped away. Maxwell has it. Jake is up. Collins behind. Puts it up. And oh, wow. Foul. Basket counts. Fouls on Lionel Hollins. Had to fight off a couple of red shirts to do it, but he maintained control. I take back everything I've ever said about you, Max, with that ball. <laughs> he did it here. Watch. Jay's on his left side. Hollins comes in from the right. You know, he, looked like, he, looked like a, he looked like a hockey player taking a puck down the ice, you know, and trying to fight off the defenders. I'll tell you. Maxwell, 84% uh, from the line. Foul is on, on Hollins. Well, with his first point since the first quarter. And he completes the three-point play. Cedric with 10 points. Max has got to be involved in the offense. For yes, he does. To be at their best. He's and played. Max won't really force it, though. You know, he really doesn't. Yeah. And he plays too integral, integral part in the uh, Celtic offense and flow to be out of it for too long. He's so effective inside. Double on the ball by the Celts. Caldwell Jones, tough hoop underneath that time. And CJ has got his first four points of the game. The last two buckets by the Philadelphia 76ers here in the third quarter. 71-51, 20-point Celtic lead. It didn't take him long to get uh, big Mr. Dawkins out of there. And Bobby Jones and uh, Caldwell switched uh, around. You know, we've talked about that earlier. That would be my counsel. Bird from the corner. Hits! Wow! He is letting it flow. That is... Raindrop cascading down a bamboo oh. shoot right there, huh? Nice soft one. Well, there isn't a heck of a lot Bill Cunningham can tell him either to, to do the stop grade, just as there wasn't, it seemed a great deal they could do to Sellers could do to stop Tony last night. Time out on the floor, 73 51 the score, 834 to go third quarter, and we'll be back right after this. Being the old stop and chop player again. There is the brain trust of the Celtics. Red Arback and Harry Mangurian. Bobby Jones, the baseline, blocked by Parrish. That is 10 blocks for Parrish in these two games. Big guy, baseline, won't go, tipped around, loose ball foul, and it's going to be on Chris Ford, and that is four on Chris. Letting 
Tony get a little too low. He needs a little more pressure. Although you've got to respect his speed, his ability with the ball. Collins wide open. Missed that one. Third Third goes with another body well. They need to move Caldwell Jones out of the play. Puts up the shot, and they're going to call the foul on Bobby Jones. Now Jones moved in after Bird left. Uh, and after Bird took the flight here. A little trouble getting control of the ball. Well, almost got it to go down. Huh? ML Carr will check in, and Chris Ford comes out. Each team with a couple of team fouls. 7.56 to go, third quarter. 73-51. Well, the Cells didn't get the first hoop of the quarter, but they've gotten three others, and will end up getting seven points at this point if Bird makes the two. Larry with 28 points. Steve Mix checks in, and Dr. J comes out. 12 for 14 from the field, and 4 for 4 from the line. That's not too shabby. Got it again. 5 for 5. As Jay checked out, it just crossed my mind that we talked earlier in the year about the fact that Jay's wife is expecting a child, and the last two times she expected he won championships in the ABA. And uh, Tony hits another one. And I trust Mrs. Irving is doing very, very well. <laughs> Tiny off the glass and in. Woof. Tiny Archibald with 17. Nice play. This is the juncture of the game, and you've got to pay particular attention to Tony. When you've got yourself a Hits nice it. lead, and the defense uh, may let down just a bit. This, Foul this is on when, ML uh, Carr. Yep, this is when a kid like Tony can... They really got explosive. Well, Bob, nice move. Remember the Sunday game, the final game here. This is exactly what Tony did. Selvig's were up by got 20 right going in the fourth yeah. quarter, and he got him yeah. right back into it. Yeah. Now, this is also something that Cunningham can do. He can bring in guys like Richardson, Mix, get the starters out of there, and maybe something can can happen. Well, psychologically, this is what occurs. You gear yourself up to stop those starters, the superstars uh, of the league. And... When the coach goes to his bench, you have the tendency to let down. And when you do, when a guy's got the kind of talent Tony has, he can hurt you quickly. 77-56, nine on the shot clock. Parrish has a strip by Bobby Jones back to Carr. Three on the shot clock. Two, he takes the shot. Won't count. Won't count. 24-second clock had yeah, expired. Good call by Lee Jones. Officials have worked themselves a pretty good game tonight, by the way. And but well, it was an extremely physical first half. Pitches up, encouraging ML to dig in on Tony. I think he recognizes, you know, what we talked about a moment ago, that ML may be letting down just a bit. Three fouls on ML now. It is. He's, uh, isn't as well balanced as he'd like to be here. Tony's laying a few moves on him. Steal there, Parrish to Archibald, behind the back, hold up. He gets it to Larry. Oh, with Bobby Jones just knocked Archibald down. Bird misses it. Maxwell, the offensive board, blocked underneath by Mix. Parrish has it blocked. Parrish. Oh, wow. Just stick his arm right down through the hole. Oh, the basket. It was a roto-rooter job. Hey, a good defense on the part of Philadelphia rejected. Three attempts by the Celts, all strong ones. Blocked by Bird, two on to Maxwell. Here he comes, Carr on the wing, Max takes it up, won't go, the whistle, goaltending gonna be called, the basket to Maxwell. He got the basket, Max, he went he down, but he, uh, Somebody better tell him he got the hoop. Thought he could have run that bounce pass through to ML, but anyway, decided to take it in himself, and he did get the hoop. 81-56, I guess it's safe to say the Celtics have shaken the cobwebs out. Well, six on the shot clock whistle. Three-second violation on Caldwell Jones. Again, a cell intensity is creating a lot of other breaks for them now. Jay comes back. So Cunningham hasn't thrown in the towel, certainly. Five fifty-three to go, third quarter, 81-56. Maxwell posted low on Jay. Cross court to Tiny. Well, he drew the double team. Left for the free man. Six on the shot clock. Parrish will put it up. 
Max got a piece of it, but Jay saves it. Clint Richardson down low and in. Nice move by Clint Richardson. This is a kid that started for him last year, Bob. Well, and it's not too bad a player. Started 14 games for them last year, and I agree with you completely. I uh, I wouldn't hesitate to go to him before Tony. I hate to keep getting on Tony's case. He can shoot it, but Richardson is stable and solid. Time out on the floor, 525 to go in the quarter. 81-58, Celts on top, and we're going to be back right after this. We had a promo, and I wanted to read it, but they just took it away. <laughs> All right. 81-58, Celts on top. Third quarter statistics, Celtics shooting just 38%, Philadelphia 40%, and uh, Celts out rebounding Philly 9-5. Parrish with 12 rebounds, and Bird also 12. And Parrish has seven on the offensive end. Full court pressure, mid court pressure. Half court trap. Tiny picks it up and gets it into the corner where the... Uh Two free men were. Stripped loose, but Parrish picks it up and puts it in. Parrish with 10 points. As we said last night, there's not a lot of things that these two teams can do to each other. Jay with a fantastic move. Jay with just seven on the night. Now, there's not too many things that these two clubs can show each other that they you know, haven't seen and aren't completely familiar with from watching the tapes and uh, scouting reports. So... Uh, Pressure. Give Perry 13 points now as he works baseline. Five on the shot clock. Falling away and in. Oh, wow. Tough shot that time by Robert Perry. Make it 15 points now for double O. Good defense by uh, Caldwell, Caldwell Jones. Jones. Couldn't have played him yep. any better. Really forced Harris into a tough shot, but he made it anyway. Foul on ML Carr, and on Carr, that is four fouls. So both Ford and Carr with four. The majority of those picked up when they picked guarding Andrew Tony. Well, any good one-on-one -on -one player, as I say, if the offense uh, keys on him, you know, is going to make, uh, make it very difficult to guard, but also going to cause the man who is guarding him to pick up a lot of fouls. Henderson checks in, ML Carr comes out, and Dawkins will check in, and Caldwell Jones comes out, as they'll try Henderson on Tony for a while. Henderson with a little bit of foot speed should be able to force him at least where he wants to go or keep him from going where he wants to go. Celtics is a little more effectively. Over the limit. Tony now with 18 points in the game. As we said, generally with a guy like Tony, you want to force him where you can get the most help, and that normally is into the middle as opposed to letting him go baseline. This is where it broke down on that last play last night. They gave up the baseline, and they forced Maxwell to fire him. Uh, excuse me. Baseline will take it in. Drops it off to Maxwell, and two. Good job. Good job. Good floater through the air again. And that one and finally uh, found Max before he came to the ground. Deflected out of bounds by Henderson. It'll be Philadelphia basketball with 13 in the shot clock and an 87-62 Celtic lead with 3.55 to go in the quarter. Celtics, by the way, maintain their defensive intensity here. Wow, oh, Jay, boy. Man. Let's take another look and at that foul. one. Outstanding play by Dr. Jay. He continues to show you something different and more spectacular every game. He's got extreme pressure from... Both the Celtics, Max and Henderson, pushing him out of the play, and yet he is still in midair, able to dunk the ball. Foul on Maxwell, his first. Ooh. It's Jay making like an acrobat. Misses the first, and he'll have the penalty. This guy can uh, do things in the air that just seem to defy the laws of gravity, you know, for a human being. I constantly amazed. He shows you something new every time. One fine athlete, and he's got his head on his shoulder properly. Here's oh. the trap again. You're absolutely two, one, right two there. Alignment. Yeah, he's I know. one of the he's fine heck, people in the NBA. He's a heck of a kid. Tiny throws it away. High pass, and it'll be Philadelphia basketball. 87-65, 22-point lead with 3.43 left to go in the quarter. And Tony and Henderson starting to mix it up a little bit. And Cunningham. Letting Lee Jones have it. Let Billy better watch out. He's He's got one left. Yeah. 
Is that like team foul? She, you, you as a coach get to waste those technicals. Blocked by Parrish. Good help path on that weak side. Ah, they're going to stop play because they got to get the 24 second clock straightened out. The block, the, the, it was a block shot, all right? So the clock should not have reversed back to 24. All Here right. it is. You're going to see Parrish come over and give Max they reset all the it help there. he needs. Matt Dal Garrison alertly pick that up. They're trying to decide how many seconds should be left on a 24-second clock. Billy Cunningham looking on anxiously, although he's got to be pleased coming out of here with that first uh, oh. first game victory. As I said, that would have been a demor it was a tough defeat for the Celtics, but it would have been demoralizing for the 76ers last night to have played that tough a game and been that close. Well, they don't reset. They keep the 18 no, seconds. Well, it was 22 when they stopped it. Jay and the easy one. So Jay has come alive now. He has seven points in the quarter and 12 in the night. It is now a 20-point ball game. What do you think? Billy told him to get it down about 14 to start the fourth quarter. Yeah. Bird, don't, don't try to get the it running back right hander won't go. Tipped out, and it'll be Philadelphia basketball. You know, just keep eating away at the lead. That's what you want to do on this level. If you try to get it back too quickly, you usually uh, simply increase the deficit. So just play your game. Look for the good shots, and assume that the defense is going to let down because it's got a good, a big lead. Ten on the shot clock. Andrew Tony taking the baseline. Blocked by Maxwell. Bird brings it down. Two on two with Parrish. Larry in the lane. Puts it up and in. And they're going to call an offensive foul. Tough call. Here's Tony's drive to the basket. Max comes in and helps. Selix with great weak side help tonight defensively. Change of direction by Bird. It looks like he's got the step, but Bobby Jones is so quick. Makes the adjustment. Picks up the charge on Bird. His second foul. McHale checks in, and Bird comes out. And Richardson hits from outside. And all of a sudden, Philadelphia has ripped off Here a comes nice little Philly. string of points. Seven straight, and it's 87-69. This is the time when you look for the good shot. You go inside, try to get the show, and I'll pick up the foul. Ten on the shot clock. Tiny from 20 hits. Or else go out about 20. <laughs> Bob, they just don't listen to you. What can I tell you? Huh? Oh, wow. Since the beginning of time, players have never listened to coaches. That's the problem. That's why coaches don't. Look out, don't Dawkins blocked by Parrish, and they're going to call an offensive foul on Gerald Dawkins. And Maxwell, excuse me, Tiny Archibald is down on the floor. Well, let's hope that that's not serious. It is Tony uh, pointing Jay away, opens it up for Dawkins, or just leans in and clears house. Celtics going to take a 20-second timeout right now. As Tony Archibald took the brunt of that Daryl Dawkins contact on Dawkins' fourth foul. As I mentioned, McHale checks in for Bird, and that is the first time that Bird has sat down in this uh, playoff series. Talk about the classic mismatch, huh? Tiny and Dawkins. Bird has averaged yeah. almost 46 minutes in the six playoff games so far. Well, we have seen a demonstration of why he is kind of important <laughs> tonight. Yeah, I would say that so, game. Yeah. <laughs> and this is it. This is for all the marbles, babe, because if our prediction is correct, then the winner of this series does hang a flag up in uh, one of two buildings, Boston or Philadelphia. I... You know what the guys talk up. about? They don't talk about the money. Uh, they don't talk about the flag. You know, they really, you know, they talk about the championship, but they talk about the ring. Oh, uh, want the ring. It's like when you're a kid, you got to get the jacket with the leather, That's right? That's right. That's right. Remember how that, how meaningful put, that was? Put the big rock on the hand. Oh, yeah. huh? Championship rings are a guy's best friend, maybe, huh? Steal by the Sixers. 130 left to go, third quarter. 
20-point lead by the Celtics. Tony trips. No call. And they finally call a jump ball. Uh, his own man tipped him up on that. Bobby Jones set the pick, and he just tipped over uh, his uh, foot. Let's take a peek. You're going to see him trip out. Yep, Bobby Jones, his right leg, does it to him. He's Chris saying, Moore hey, back man. in for the Celtics. Tony's saying, get the bad guys, not me. I got the same color jersey. Henderson out leaps Tony. Now, uh, Gerald can sky. Which he would have been a heck of a high jumper. He has just got, he's got legs like springs. Just looking inside to McHale. Trying to get it to Maxwell, out of bounds. It'll be Philadelphia basketball with 104 to go and a chance to cut it to 18. Not a bad pass, actually. He was leading him away, but he caught Max zagging, and uh, the ball was zigging, I guess. Again, good defensive pressure by Henderson on Tony. Going low. Dawkins rejected by Parrish. Are they going to call goaltending? Dawkins was giving him that left arm that should inside. should be another charge. You're absolutely right. Should be another charge. The defensive man is entitled to that vertical position. <laughs> Look at Dawkins. Yep, he just cleared him right out of there. Ford on the baseline. Blocked by Bobby Jones. 89-71. Gerritsen's going to pause for just a moment to go over to the scorer's table. Only one second is ticked off. Now they're going to get the shot clock. They're having a little problem with the 24-second clock here this evening. Yeah, they're giving them 29 now. Now they're back to 24. Well, that may be why. It doesn't get into the teens. It goes from uh, 20 to 29 instead of 19. We were talking last cooking. night about the uh, scoreboard clock overhead, and uh, the gentleman who uh, had a lot to do with that scoreboard clock came by this evening and told me that the guts of it are brand new as of last year. He says that particular scoreboard has been up there since 65, but uh, an antique exterior, but a brand new heart of gold. He huh? said, I spent six days inside that thing. I don't know how it works. Parrish, baseline 13 and 38. Hits it. Robert Parrish now. Robert with eight third quarter points and 17 on the night, and it's 91 71. Don't let him in, Joe. Close the door. Jay thought about it from three point land. Scoops it down underneath to Richardson. Nice move there. Clint Richardson. Pass from Dr. J. 13 seconds in the quarter. McHale. Kevin, turn around. Tipped outside. Loose ball foul. They'll keep it down at the Celtic again with two picks on the clock. They had a foul of waste. I'm not sure if they picked up a foul in the last two minutes, have they? I don't think so. Probably they have. No, it'll only be the fourth team foul. That was on Jay. That was his second. The Celtics have two seconds to get off a shot. Ford. Can't get at the ball. Dawkins with one of his best rebounds of the night. <laughs> oh, got a big fella. Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna contest that when time's run out. That ends a third quarter of play from the Boston Garden with the score of the Celtics 91 and the Sixers 73. And we'll be back with the final 12 minutes right after this. Roger Twible and Bob Cousy back at the Boston Garden. We're getting set for the final 12 minutes of play here. Celtics lead at 91-73. And they're going to bring out a new 24-second clock to put on the floor like they used to in the old days, huh, Bob? Whatever's fair. After three quarters of play, Celtics have shot 51% from the floor. Philadelphia, 48. Celts, 17 of 18 from the free throw line. And Philadelphia, 11 of 15. That's encouraging. They bounce back at the line. And they've out-rebounded Philly 37-25. And they had a pretty good edge in the rebounds last night, too. And I'd say they bounced back in about every department, as a matter of fact, because they have obviously controlled this game from 
Stott hopefully to finish, although there's still 12 big minutes left. Well, and keep in mind that last regular season game when Philly was down by 20, coming in the fourth quarter, and well, they made it awfully close. Psychologically, you know, Philadelphia got the edge last night. A blowout here in the second game would, I think, to some degree, neutralize uh, any I would overconfidence like, that Philly yeah. might feel because they won the first game, you know? If I was Bill Fitch, I'd like to see maybe a 20-point win tonight. Dawkins inside. Puts it up and in. Pretty good job there by the big guy. He used his body effectively, and when Dawkins uses his body, you know, he clears half the house out. Foul outside is on Mo Cheeks, and on Cheeks, that'll be his third. And once again, the 24-second clock not functioning properly. Billy Cunningham talking to his players. And They've got the two replacement 24-second clocks getting ready to be hooked up. And what they're going to do is say, let's just hold up until we can get these clocks set up. And we've got an official's timeout right now on the floor as we just uh, started the fourth quarter. A newfound affluency in this league in our days. Uh, when that one clock went, boy, we were out of business. The, the timer would simply go into his pocket and take out the old stopwatch. And, and, and the fans were, <laughs> were just left in the dark. Yeah. But, you know, the timer would, uh, would keep it in hand and simply blow the uh, horns appropriately. But uh, we didn't have uh, two or three replacements on hand there. Okay, folks, this is what I've been waiting for. This Saturday afternoon at 4 is the SFM holiday special, Jack and the Beanstalk. This popular tale is an animated feature film for the whole family to enjoy. Jack and the Beanstalk, Saturday at 4 on Channel 4. And, Coos, I want you to put your golf sticks away. We'll be back from Philly, won't we, by then? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> if not, I'll sure catch an early plane. Oh, look at this. Right. Celtic starters tonight have outscored Philly 79-36 with the Philly bench 39-12 over Boston. Well, again, Tony deserves most of that credit once more tonight. Let me get a, an offensive show at 19 points at the uh, three-quarter mark. Let me get a, another uh, a word in here that uh, the Boston Celtics would like to extend their best wishes to Celtics fan and season ticket holder Barbara Fieri of Watertown, who's home recovering from surgery and is unable to join us for the 1981 playoffs. And the Celtics just want to say that uh, they're thinking about you. 91-75. Dawkins got the initial hoop here in this quarter. And we're just about set to go. So the guys are going to have to keep their eye on the floor now. And let's see if these clocks work. This is kind of like uh, waiting down at, uh, well, believe it or not, Kennedy Space Center. You know? Players there they seldom go. pay much attention to the 24-second clock anyway. Just the they coaches, right? Their offense. They develop a sixth sense for it after a while. They have a pretty good Blocked idea. Blocked by wow, Dawkins. Dawkins. Good job on Bobby Barry. Jones, Tony. Won't go. Roby the rebound. Celts don't want to put the brakes on too early. They want to continue to look for that break. They did that in that final game of the season, and they, uh, you know... Steal by up. Jones, and it'll be the easy two. Yep. Here comes Philadelphia. They want to continue to uh, push that ball up floor and look for the break. 14-point lead for the Celtics, 91-77. 14 points with 11 minutes is simply not a very commanding lead in this game. Sixers have outscored the Celtics 15 to 4 here at the end of the third, beginning of the fourth quarter. Cheeks reaches in and picks up his fourth foul. Right. Celtics will have it inbound. Second team foul on Philadelphia. I got a hunch we may have ourselves a close ball game yet here. Yeah. It's just not going to be that easy against Philly. McHale works in. Blocked by Jay. And here comes Mo Cheeks. He'll push it up with Jones on the wing. Well, that's quite a job by Dr. Jay defensively. Came over the back. McHale had the inside position. Still got to the ball. Blocked by McHale. Right but back at you, buddy. Woo! McHale reciprocates. Good job. There it is. McHale moving well laterally. Stays home. Doesn't go for the fakes. And he gets up the with a big rebound. 
Way to use your head, Larry. Pass to the hands, not the head, Kevin. Roby working low. Underneath. Puts it up. Block. McHale gets it and lays it in. I think they've got to go low to Rick anyway, just to open some things up. They've got to continue to run. He has not been involved in the offense at all when he's in there. Tony with the shot. Hits. Andrew Tony with 21 points. 93-79. They have an opportunity to break the game open here with three or four hoops, but they probably won't do that without capitalizing on the break. Oh, what a pick by Roby. Bounce loose. McHale gets it. Nine on the shot clock. Kevin turns around. Hits it. What a tough shot there by Kevin McHale. Quite he a has move. ten points. Quite a move by the rookie. I think five Philadelphia guys took a shot at him when he was uh, cornered in there. He was able to uh, fight them all off and then take his patented fall-away jumper. Philly wants a timeout with 9.33 to go. 95-79, Celts on top, and we'll be back right after this. Friday night at 8, the Celtics visit the doctor for another heated contest in game number three of the Eastern Conference Finals. The 76ers host the Celtics Friday night at 8, right here on Channel 4, and I do think they might sell the Spectrum out for that one. They've got to break that spectrum jinx, I'll tell you. What is it, nine state? Celtics uh, have not been able to win the last uh, nine yeah. times in there, counting playoffs. So they've got to uh, come out of there with one game. 95-79, nine and a half to go. Roby, McHale, Bird, Ford, and Henderson for the Celtics. Cheeks, Roby. Irving, Dawkins, Woo. Hollins, and Bobby Jones. Roby and Dawkins really leaning on Three each other. Three-second violation on Dawkins. Rick can keep Daryl tangled up. He might just stay in the lane all night. Huh? Well, it's tough to establish position when you're in a wrestling match, you know, and that's what <laughs> Roby's making him work that hard. Now they've got a switch off. they got Jay on Roby and Dawkins on McHale. That's interesting. Nice move Beautiful. by Daryl Henderson. Beautiful. Tucked his head in. Put the uh, afterburner on and just blew to the hoop. Irving working low. Won't go. Bird the rebound. Run it now. Run it. Bring it down. Push it up. McHale leans in. Can't get it to fall. Here come the Sixers. Bird with 14 rebounds. Bobby Jones misses. Roby comes up with a loose ball. 8.35 to go. What do you think the move Irving on, uh, on Roby? That's kind of a strange move, to tell you the truth. Called an offensive I guess foul they, uh, I guess they feel that uh, McHale is more of an offensive threat and that he can overpower Jay, you know, more easily than Rogue, who isn't quite the shooter that McHale is. Ollie so. Johnson has checked in now for Philadelphia. Caldwell Jones is in there also. Johnson's a shooter also. You can't uh, get careless on him. Kale, as Roby did a fine job screening Dawkins off that time. Bird working on Caldwell. He's inside. And a foul is going to be on Caldwell Jones, and that is four on CJ. So I think the uh, the game has finally opened up. Caldwell just kind of extends his hip. That's Tony comes back in. Third team foul. None on the Celtics, by the way. Mo Cheeks will come out. I think for the first time, Cunningham has decided to rest up for uh, Friday's game. Bird way outside. Hits! Bird with 31. Boy, he has put on some kind of offensive show. McHale got a hand on it. Ollie Johnson misses. Henderson comes flying through. Dawkins will take the shot. Bad miss. Saved by Ford. Bird coming down with it behind the back. And he'll get it to Henderson. 20-point lead now with 7.05 to go. Bird, 
20 feet. No problem. Ooh. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. Also nothing but net. I mean, he's not even getting close to the win. 14 of 20 by Bird. Foul is on Roby as Tony drove to the hoop. Well, I think they can start thinking about giving Bird a rest in another couple of minutes. Well, this is the first one. Bird's playoff career high is 35 against Chicago in game four. He has 33. Tony hits the second. Oh, what a oh, pick right there Lobe by Roby. He just wiped out Tony. Henderson wide open. He hits it. I right, oh, give Roby yeah. some credit on that one. They were going to get Tony Woo. sooner or later. Yes, sir. Is it getting physical? This boy just got wiped Hobbs. out underneath. Hits it. I'll tell you, Dawkins did that last year to Chris Ford on several occasions. Well, I'll tell you, that rings your bell. Oh, if you've geez. never had your cage rattle like that, you can't imagine. When you're trying to backtrack quickly and you run into Bird, step back. 240 pounds a man. 103-82, Holland's inside. Missed the gimme. Bird will hold it up. All right, take it home. Bird with 33 points and 15 rebounds. Philadelphia isn't going to make another run. This is uh, one of his Los Angeles Rancho Deluxe performances. Ford and in. Chris Ford, his first hoop of the night. This gets off the schneid. Good balance scoring led by yes, Bird tonight. But Maxwell with 14, Powers 17, Tiny 19. Tony getting his own rebound. Block. Now Garrison blows a whistle. Now late whistle, but a good call because uh, Lee Jones just wasn't ready to make the call. Garrison got up on the outside. Mix checks in. Clint Richardson oh, wow. checks in. I'll tell you, the, the, the thing to be careful of here with five minutes left is don't get anyone hurt because uh, the, uh, the monsters are coming in there. And as I say, they recognize the game is over. Tony will go to the free throw line. He has 22 points in the night. You and make it 23. Get cautious at this point. 534 left to go. 105-83. Andrew Tony once again, the main offensive threat for the 76ers. Well, Roby was setting up another one, but Tony, Tony's looking now. He's <laughs> Well, Henderson and Tony exchanging uh, body blows. Bird, step back. Throws it up, draws the foul on Ollie Johnson. Every which way but loose right here. Watch the moves. Uh, Henderson uh, gives one back to Tony. Bird. Good fake, gets Johnson up in the air and then just leans in a little bit to absorb the shock of the, uh, the crashing body. Bob, a pick like that will make you play a little bit looser on the D, won't it? Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> it, it makes you look over your shoulder, obviously, you know. Because <laughs> you've got to dig in and concentrate on the man when you're picking him up full court that way. But after you've run into the monster at that speed uh, and get your bell rung. Bird missed the oh, free throw. Roby tipped it out. To Roby underneath. They say a good block by Dawkins. And they're all looking. I'll tell you, this is the time when the officials have to blow a little bit more. They've let them play, and they've done a good job all game, but they can't be unaware that the boys are starting to take cheap shots. Both teams are starting to hammer each other, and I think they'd, they'd better blow it uh, a little bit more rather than run out the string. Ollie Johnson with a miss. Now a whistle. Loose ball foul. Foul is going to be on Roby. Rick told me one time, he says, it's a heck of a good thing that Daryl Dawkins is a nice guy. <laughs> and Dawkins and Henderson have a couple of words. Yeah, it's getting nasty. Foul 
is on Dawkins and not Roby. Okay. And that's a fifth. So subtract one from Robes. Total of three. And Robe is kind of happy about that. He's kind of keeping a cautious eye on Darrell Dawkins as Darrell stalks him a little bit. Bill Fitch, some final instructions to Gerald Henderson. Roby will go to the foul line as the Celtics are in the penalty. Rick has not scored tonight, and he misses the free throw. He'll have one more. Earl the twirl. Okay, the series appears to be tied at this point. Go back to Philadelphia on Friday. In and out. Looking to pick up one win down there. Mix on top. McHale the rebound. Five boards for Kevin. Big strong kids. He spreads out well when he goes up. Makes it difficult to come over his back or get the inside. Henderson can't get the pass from Larry Bird out of bounds. It'll be Philadelphia that, basketball. That, that may be the first mistake Bird's made all night, I'll tell you. He made one bad pass early tonight oh. to Jay intercepting. Yeah, right, early in the first quarter. Yeah. Matter of fact. Tony outside. He does that so well on top, Bob. Yeah, he gets a little fake left. He stays low. And, and he pulls that ball back behind move. his ear, yeah. and he can get the shot off. Well, he, see, you've got to be low when you're guarding him when he's alive with the ball, and he jumps so well that he simply jumps over most defenders. Foul on Larry Bird in the backcourt. And Tony will come down and go to the charity strike. I tell you, they're all... Uh, Everybody's taking a shot at Tony a little bit here. You see Bird give him a uh, little knee action there. And Larry Bird checks out. ML Carr comes in. Larry Bird in the night, 33 points. 34 points I've got him for. Yeah, I have 16 34. rebounds and five assists. And once again, that's an a la L.A. performance as he gets a standing ovation from the crowd of 15,320 plus and a big standing O. And it is deserved, I'll tell you that. Larry hit 14 of 21 from the floor and six of seven from the free throw line and they're still applauding and he gives them away. Tony gets clobbered again. Roby oh, sets out on the, the floor. Four, three point land, won't go. Long pass down court. Curden lays it in. Now, Roby laid another one, and I tell you, Billy Cunningham was yeah, out on the floor. He's furious. All three coaches, Jack McMahon, Chuck Daly. A, a pick isn't legal? It, it absolutely, as long as uh, there's no movement on it. Roby has just caught him twice. I'll the tell you, Daw run him in. Dawkins did that at least three or four times last year to Ford. Ollie Johnson, the rebound. 106-90 with 3.16 to go. Curtin, bad miss, over the back. Mix throws it out and Ford comes up with it. Now's the time to start running the clock down, by the way. <laughs> to McHale, and in. Nice little fake nice by play. Roby there. And a good move by Kevin McHale inside. Timeout on the floor, 2.51 to go. Celts lead at 108.90. And we'll be back right after this. <laughs> Friday night at 8, the Celtics visit the doctor for another heated contest in game number three of the Eastern Conference Finals. The 76ers host the Celtics Friday night at 8, right here on Channel 4. I'll tell you, when they wrote that copy, they didn't know how pathetic that's going to turn out to be because uh, I got a hunch it's going to be nasty on Friday. The uh, Philadelphia coaching staff is incensed that the... Uh, <laughs> at the physical nature of, uh, of play... Ford with tonight. the steal! Mix finds Ollie Johnson underneath and he lays it in. Now it is a 14 point game, excuse me, 16, 108 92 with 2.31 to go. Running the 
clock down. Philadelphia is over the limit, so the Celts can afford to wait for the double team and the foul. McHale, the follow away, hits! Kevin McHale now with eight fourth quarter points and 14 on the night. He is seven of nine from the floor. He's going to play a very dominant role in this series uh, before it's over. Richardson, pretty move, won't go and Roby the rebound. Roby inside. And hits it. First two for the night for Rick. 112-92. 143 to go. And Terry Durod getting ready to check in. Curitan misses. Roby the rebound. Releases to Ford. Celtics have got a two-on-one with Carr. McHale picks up the loose ball. And lays Whoa. it in. Well, as we said earlier, I think a good solid blowout will do wonders for the seller confidence take the sting out of that opening loss. Whistle outside, foul on Henderson. Bella clearing their bench. Terry Do Durant. Bernston check in. Roby will come out. Oh, done a good job. I'll tell you, if he'd done nothing else but set those two bone-shattering picks that's, that's, on Tony, that would have been we, enough of a contribution. That's why we call him Big Bumper, huh? Well, there, he saved up a couple for this one. One nineteen to go, one fourteen ninety two. Tony misses Carr the rebound. Two, two, they yell. Can't get it to drop. McHale the following in. McHale with 12 fourth quarter points and 18 on the night. One minute left to go. Steal by McHale. Oh. He gets it. Watch this one. Oh, the fans love it. Tony hits it and he's fouled. Fouls on ML Carr. That's the fifth on ML. 118-94. Game three Friday night. We'll have it for you. A series will be tied at one apiece. I got a feeling, Bob, this one might just go seven. When is game seven? Absolutely. Celtics in seven. Tony with another big night. And Jay with another quiet night. And one might have something to do with the other. Doc with just 12 points. They're looking for Durod. ML's got it. Now they throw it away. Andrew Tonian in. 118, 97, 23 seconds left. Henderson the pull up pop. In and out. Durod taps it. Mix comes down with it. 14 seconds to go. Andrew Tony again. He's having himself a heck of a night. Statistic wise, eight seconds, seven. They're setting up Durod for the final shot. Due from midcourt. Three pointer. Oh, go. That'll do it. Final score Celtics 118, the Sixers 99. Bob and I will be back to wrap things up right after this. Score 118-99 tonight. Series tied at one game apiece. And I'll tell you what, good diversified scoring, Bob. Maxwell 14, Bird 34, Parrish 17, Archibald 19, McHale 20. Good job tonight. Celtics really bounced back. In oh, absolutely. Fashion. Good solid win. Uh, really, they touched and dominated just about every uh, feature of the game. Uh, good balance offensively. Uh, the team support defense was there, a lot of help on the weak side, everyone trying to help each other. A couple of nice picks on Tony to uh, to somewhat straighten him out, although he still came up with 35. And they controlled, I thought, both. I'll be interested to see the statistics because they controlled both backboards uh, almost completely. Anyway, confidence builder, uh, and we'll get him down okay. to Philadelphia on Friday.
Tonight, Bob and I have picked Larry Bird to be the stop and shop Celtic player of the game. Bird had 34 points, 16 rebounds, 5 assists. He just did it all. Larry Bird will receive a $25 stop and shop gift certificate. Let's see if we have a stop and shop customer who matched our player of the game. And tonight's winner, as soon as Robert draws it out of our first meticulously is, sealed envelope, is opening the envelope, is Arthur Medeiros of, let's say, I got, I think that's Westport, Westport. is it not? All right, stores in Dartmouth, and Arthur selected Larry Bird as a stop and shop Celtic player of the game, and uh, congratulations, we have a match. Arthur Medeiros, you'll receive a $100 stop and shop gift certificate. Remember, all entries in the stop and shop Celtic player of the game contest who are selected are winners, match or no match, so enter now. Remember, our next telecast is Friday, April 24th, when the Celtics play the Philadelphia 76ers in game three of the Eastern Conference Finals at the Spectrum in Philadelphia.